Hi, I'm Ralph Demetrius, one of the astrologers with Planetary Calendar, and this is a portrait. This week we're doing Napa, California, the city. It was founded on March 23rd, 1872. Now, most people know Napa as a place for wine, but as you can tell from the chart with the sun at three degrees, Aries, conjunct Chiron, the healing planet, at 10 degrees, before it was known for its work with wine, it was known as a healing center. The two biggest hotels in the state back in the 1800s were both in Napa, and they were healing spas. In Aries, for what reason? Hot springs, Aries, fire, coming out of the earth. What else is also there? Mercury and Mars are conjunct at 16 degrees Aries, right? Now, that would be significant by itself, except that Mars is in its rulership, which gives this area a tremendous amount of energy. What's interesting is that the native people who were here before the Onasai, also known as the Wapo, according to the Spanish, were very aggressive. Well, that's Mars and Aries. They're also considered, they were called the outspoken ones. Well, that's Mars and Aries conjunct Mercury, the speaker, all wrapped into one. I mean, that really describes it. Who else is also there? Neptune and Aries. And Neptune, you can't help but want to associate Neptune and wine. You just can't help it. It just seems like it's linked together. Now, who's missing in this party? Venus. It's a beautiful place. If you visit it, Napa, it's gorgeous. You figure Venus is going to be important. Where is Venus? Venus is in the ninth house in Pisces, which really is the sign of wine. In the ninth house, people coming from foreign lands. So many of the important people who have made Napa famous have come from foreign lands. In Pisces, what's called the exalted position. Boy, Napa's wines have been exalted here. This little farming community produce some of the, produces some of the finest wines on the planet, and people exalted them for it. So you have Mars in rulership, you have Venus in a rulership, it's an exalted position. Who else is doing that kind of stuff? Saturn. Saturn in Capricorn, that's another rulership position. It's in the seventh house, right? What does that mean? The ability to make very good partnerships. And anyone who knows about winemaking and grape growing knows it's all about the partnerships. It's all about the deals. It's about showing up. And out here, they don't really take you seriously until you've been here five, six, ten years. You know, they want to know how many vintages have you been here? Saturn and Capricorn in the seventh house. Who else is pretty exceptional? At the rising sign, Cancer. Now, Anyone who lives here knows that this is really a hometown. I mean, this is where people live. People think of it as a tourist destination. Tourism, tourism's like 10%. Winemaking and grape growing and farming, that's 90%. Tourism's this. It really is a place where people live. That's Cancer Rising. What's conjunct the rising? Jupiter, bigger than life. Boy, are there some big houses here. I mean, boy, does that describe it. Jupiter and Cancer conjunct loosely Uranus. Revolutionary. It did transformative stuff. And what's amazing is that how many things um, where this region has been a major innovator in terms of wine. It, the work between Napa, Sonoma, and uh, the universities, Berkeley and UC Davis, have transformed the world of wine by sharing information widely, and that's Uranus. Information about what food, that's cancer, and being known for that. So winemakers come here from all over the world to work and to learn because they know the information is openly accessible. Now the moon, right, is in Virgo perfect position for winemaking because 90% of winemaking is washing things. And the Virgo moon, the mom, the woman, the caretaker in the sign of Virgo, the person who cleans absolutely everything, uh, it's perfect. And what? The sign in the third house, which is a mercurial house, okay? So it's the area of the hands. And a great deal of the work of winemaking, especially at this high level, is done with the hands. It's labor-intensive, but it's hand-intensive. 
Even picking is done by hand. It's really remarkable how much of the work is people sorting through bunches of grapes to make sure every grape is perfect. You know, that 90 degree, 90% 90 is very, very true. So we have all these different qualities that so support this concept of, um, of it being just very successful. You have Vesta in the second house, in Leo. And the second house is, you know, your resources. Well, Vesta is, among other things, hot springs. Well, at the top part of the valley are the Calistoga hot springs. And throughout the valley are springs, are mineral springs. The whole valley is, even during droughts, we typically do very well here because there's so much water underneath the ground. But these minerals are part of the contributors to what makes a spectacular wine. The other resource is it's Leo. Leo is the sun. Part of the quality that we, um, this area is so remarkable, is the incredibly bright sunshine. We call it abundant sunshine because the sun bounces off the water, Cancer rising, and reflects back up to the sky. Cancer rising, Jupiter and Cancer rising. What does that mean? It means people coming from far off on land by water. Guess what? The Napa River is how many of the first important settlers arrived here and many of the important first investors here were sea captains who got here and said this was far enough this is this is home so it's just a fantastically interesting chart one when we look at the buildings of the area it's interesting because uh, a lot of the buildings were built in the 1800s and the city hall which is now the courthouse is a beautiful beautiful building what's interesting it's very long and you would expect a nice grand entrance on the side, so you're facing towards the south, but it doesn't do that. The entranceway is actually to the east. Well, it's Aries. Aries rises in the east. It's the beginning of the day. And what's interesting is that it's a very long building with a narrow front because it's at the side. In a home, that means that people's exposure to the outer world is much smaller than the depth depth of their life. You know, when you have a person who the home is very broad but shallow, it means their whole life is lived out there in the world. Everyone sees everything they do, but it doesn't talk about the depth of their personalities, the depth of their life. Napa is tremendously deep. When you get here, you know, people see the wines and the fun and the, you know, the buses, and that's what they see. But when you get here, you realize, no, it's got tremendous depth to this area, tremendous context and content. It's really remarkable. And the city hall, the current city hall, is lined up the same way. It faces to the east. In fact, so many of the important buildings are facing towards the east. In fact, Napa was actually the site of the first branch bank in the world. It was the Bank of Italy at the time. And what does it do? It faces east. The first one, Aries is the first sign. So even in the way in which things are arranged, it's there. Now, what's funny is the county is not an Aries. The county is an Aquarian. Their doors all face north. Aquarius is one of the Saturn signs. It's towards the north. But if it's related to the city, it faces east. Now, the Uranus rising in Cancer, not that far away from Jupiter, Earthquakes, earthquakes, fires, earthquakes, fires, and floods. Yeah, <laughs> that's part of living in Napa, the disruption that comes to of our home. But it's Jupiter. We get over it. We work together, we rebuild, and we get past it. So I hope you found this interesting. I think it's a fascinating study. We first looked at the chart during the 2014 earthquake in which there were major hits to this chart and everything shook for 45 seconds in the middle of the night and knocked everything on the floor. So come see us at planetarycalendar.com and spaceandtime.com to check out the forecast. We post forecasts every Friday. And you can also get your calendar there because you want to know what's going on. Thanks for joining us and see you next time.